Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we have another short down and dirty. And it's gonna sound silly, but it's one of those things that more people in the industry don't know how to do this than I like to admit. How to adjust your air ride seat. Like you would think that's a pretty straightforward deal, but at the same time, like operators really seem to struggle with this. So we're gonna go through it. So first of all, we're gonna look down here. Here is your indicator right here. And see how when I'm sitting down it's green? When I stand up, it's red, or if I let more air out, it starts to turn red as well. Red means, well, red in this situation, because I'm too low, means your ass is too fat and you need more air in the seat. So what we're gonna do is putting my full weight on it, we're gonna hit the little switch here, and we're gonna pump it up. until you're in the green, just like that. Now here's the trick. That's with you bent over, not really paying attention, and it also doesn't allow the springs to kind of absorb some of your body weight. So what I typically do is bounce a little bit and then check it. So good, perfectly in the green. The other common mistake I see is guys that want a booster seat. And yes, I'm calling you out, you're using a booster seat like my six year old in the car. If you crank that thing all the way up to where it's hard as a rock and you're sitting an inch from the ceiling, you need a booster seat. Instead of blowing out the air ride seat because you're overfilling it, go home, get yourself a phone book and bring it to work because you're short. Right there. You can see how it was in the green, but as soon as I stood up, notice how it's in the red. That's not going to save your back. The whole reason you have these air ride seats is to save your back so you're not slamming down on the on the basically the frame of the of the chair or the seat. So the other thing I'll say is if you want to underfill or overfill, I would say err on the side of overfilling just a hair. Excuse me. That way when you guys go over some pretty big bumps, and I'm talking primarily dozer, in an excavator it's not as critical, but like in a dozer, when you go over some pretty good bumps, instead of slamming down on the frame, if you overfill your seat just a hair, it will catch you with the cushion before you actually hit the frame. So that's it, it's really straightforward. The only other thing I'll say is there are some mechanical adjustable seats that have a dial that you turn, and you dial it in for your weight on those seats. Um, again, dial it to your weight, test it out. If you're still bottoming out, dial it up just a hair more. Again, that way you're not bottoming out on the frame of the seat, you're not killing your back. Do this, do it the correct way, and you will still have a back when you're 55 years old, as opposed to the guys that need their booster seat, or the guys who like to, for whatever reason, sit on the floor of the cab. Those are the guys that always have back issues. So, these chairs, I used to sell equipment, and I can tell you right now, the seat for this machine is like a $400 to $600 seat depending on the machine you have. Use it. It's designed to be comfortable. Use it as such and freaking stop overfilling the seat and blowing out the airbag so that no one can have a comfortable ride. If you do that, you're an idiot. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it. So that's all we got for today. You guys have a good one.